Hi everyone, we're gonna get started in just a few minutes here. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. We're gonna get live and start here in just a few moments. We're gonna wait for a couple more people to pop on. Mm -hmm. Hi Derek, how's it going? Thanks for joining us today. Um, if you're live and you've jumped on, um, you're going to need a shoelace or some kind of string with you today um, to follow along and join in. So as you're waiting for us to begin, um, feel free to grab any string you have at home, a shoelace, a rope, twine, anything that you have laying around that you can use for today to follow along. Hi, Cameron, and hi, Pat. I hope you're doing well. All right, everyone, we're going to join or start in just a minute. Thanks for hopping on. Um, if you didn't hear before, um, you're going to need some kind of string with you today, a shoelace, um, some kind of rope. Um, we're going to learn how to tie different knots that we use here at camp. And to kind of add something new to your repertoire, um, you can use knots kind of anywhere. And we'll go through that in just a minute. All right, we are going to get started here. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna go through a couple different knots that we use here at camp in different areas. Um, and I'm gonna give you kind of a synopsis or a tutorial of how to do it. Um, and if you have questions, feel free, free to throw them in the comments um, and I'll slow down and we can try again. If you need it to be shown again, just let me know. Um, so just a quick introduction. Um, this is Camp Live, which is happening every Friday at 2.30 Central Standard Time. So thanks everyone for tuning in. My name is Katie. Um, I work at camp and my past job at camp was the adventure director. Um, so that means I oversaw all the high ropes and low ropes at camp um, and became very good at knot tying. And that's something that I'm going to share with you today. Um, so knots are important in the world, whether it's tying your shoe or keeping someone safe 30 feet up in the air on belay. Um, so with that being said, um, does anybody know where at camp we would use knots or what kind of knots we use? If you do, feel free to comment um, in the comment section of this video as you follow along. Okay, so the different knots that we're gonna learn today um, one is called the, um, the clove hitch. It's what we use to put the rope up in the air. Um, it's also can be used to join ropes together. The next knot we're going to use is called, or learn is called the alpine butterfly. It's fairly simple. It's used to hook someone into the rope or it is used um, to keep a piece of the rope stagnant so it doesn't go through the belay device. And then the third knot we're going to use today is called the figure eight on a bite. Um, and that's what we use to hook you in when you climb or you do any of the different adventure activities at camp. So that could be from the tree climb, the jungle gym, the Bermuda Triangle, all of those. OK, so the first one, um, we're going to grab our rope and we're going to try out the clove hitch. OK, um, and I'll go through this two separate times. And if you need it again, just let me know. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna take your rope 
And you're going to take one part and you're going to make a loop. And that loop, one part's going to be facing me and one part's going to be facing you. I'm going to pinch that loop there, kind of like a, a bunny ear. And then I'm going to make another loop, but this loop's going to be facing the other way. So if you can see that one piece is towards me and one piece is towards you. Can everybody see that? Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the piece that's facing you the loop and I'm just gonna cross it over and it's gonna sit on top of itself. Do you see that there? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my finger in it and when I pull it tight, it's gonna become a knot. Can you see how it kind of looks like a X on your finger there? So this knot is used when we are hooking up our adventure elements to pull the rope up in the air. And we usually do at least three um, just for a little bit of redundancy, um, which means to make sure that we're double checking or triple checking ourselves in the way that we like to do it, um, to make sure that that rope is not let go. And I'll show you it one more time. So I'm gonna use a different colored rope so it's a little bit easier to see. So I'm gonna flip it over once and make one bunny ear with one end towards me and one end towards you. And then I'm gonna do the same thing again with a second loop, this side towards you. Can everybody see that? And then I'm gonna take the side that's closest, furthest away from me, I'm gonna take that loop and I'm just gonna cross them on top of each other. And I'm gonna put something in it so that I know that it's gonna become a knot and I'm gonna pull it tight here. So this is what the knot should look like. It's pretty tight. I can pull it tight and it's not going to move anywhere. Okay. And that is called your clove hitch. Does anybody have any questions about that one? Okay. We're going to move to the next knot then. If you have any questions as we go through, feel free to let me know. Um, something else that I want to add that's pretty exciting. Um, I'm sure a lot of you know that um, camp week long sessions are not going to be running this summer. Um, but with that being said, anyone that was planning on coming to camp for a week long, um, we want to send a t shirt to you your camper t shirt that you would have gotten this year they are red. Um, so if you need we're planning on coming to camp this summer, um, and we're registered, you can send an email to Sonia at campcourageous.org and you're going to list your name, your address, and your t-shirt size and then we'll send a shirt out to you so you can still get your shirt that you usually would get at camp. We want to make sure you get that aspect of it. We're missing you all a lot but we want to make sure at least you get that part of your camp experience. Okay, so the second knot we're going to do is called the alpine butterfly. The alpine butterfly is pretty cool and it's called an alpine butterfly. I'm going to show you the knot here that I've already made and we'll make it together um, because it has two wings and then it has a head. Do you see the head of the butterfly and then the two wings here and here? This can be used to tie someone into the rope so I could take a climbing carabiner. This is my water bottle carabiner, but a climbing carabiner and attach this to your harness. So you can help as a backup belayer or help with the rope and pulling it. Or it can be used just as a fancy cool knot. I think this is one of my favorite knots because it's pretty easy to do, um, but it's also pretty fun. So what we're going to do is we're going to take your rope. You're going to lay your hand flat out like this, and we're going to go around three times. So I'm going to go around once, twice, and three times. Can everybody see that? Okay. So then what's going to happen, I'm going to kind of show you while my hands turn towards you, is I'm going to take the second loop here. I'm going to pull it up, go back down, and then go up again through the last loop and pull it tight. I'll show you in just a second again. So now it looks like a little butterfly. So we got our tall loop. And then we got our wings, okay? So let's try that again. So I'm gonna do three loops around my hand. One, two, and three. Can everybody see that there? And I'm gonna take this second piece and I'm gonna grab it from underneath, pull it up, put it over, push it through, 
and pull up. And I'm just gonna pull it tight. And that's gonna make our alpine butterfly. So you can see here's the head of the butterfly and then here's the two wings. And this is where you would hook on. I'm just gonna pause for a moment here. All right, and it looks like there is now a link for the t-shirts actually, so you don't have to email Sonia. Um, you can go to our website and there's a link for it and I'm sure that someone will add it into the comments of our video in just a little bit. So you can click right on it. So thank you everyone for joining us. I'm gonna keep going. We have one more knot. Um, I'm just gonna stop for a moment and make sure I didn't miss any comments as we go through. Hi, Emily. Thanks for checking in. Thanks, Cassidy. Cassidy was one of our adventure specialists last summer, if you remember her. Um, she did a great job as a therapeutic rec intern and the adventure specialist. Hi, Miss Nelson. I'm glad you were able to come to camp in elementary school before summer. And we still do that. We still have um, outdoor education programs that come um, throughout the school year until May 15th usually. Um, and we're looking forward to having that again in 2021. Um, does the knot untie well, Cameron? Um, yeah, so knots are pretty well easy to untie when there's not any um, friction on them or any tension. So that's what's really important. So if I were to pull this knot, it's not going to go anywhere. Um, but if I needed to untie it when there's no tension on there, I can just pull it right apart. Um, so I'm sure you can kind of see um, on your lace there right now. Um, and then we have one more knot to go through. Um, and as I go through that, I want, if you have ever tried out any adventure um, aspects of camp, feel free to put your favorite one in the comments below. We're always looking to see what your favorite is. Um, I know my new favorite, um, we now have a new Burma Bridge and Indiana Jones Walk is what we're calling it. Um, and it's our newest element at camp. So as soon as campers are able to come back, we'll be able to use that again um, and try it out. Okay, so we have one more knot. Um, this knot I think is the most important for our adventure program because it's what keeps you safe while you are climbing here at camp. Um, this knot is called the figure eight on a bite. It is what, if you've ever climbed, you are hooked to with our carabiners when you have your harness and chest harness on. Um, so the figure eight on a bite is gonna look kinda like this. It looks a little bit intimidating, but I promise it's not very hard to learn. And it's something that we'll go through step by step um, for you to follow along. And if you have any questions as we go, just let me know and I will slow it down. Um, this part here is the part we will learn. This part you may recognize a little bit. It's called a barrel knot or a backup knot. Um, and this is used to make the excess piece of rope at the end, make sure it stays tight and it stays safe. Um, so when this rope moves as you're climbing, nothing can happen to the rope that is your lifeline. Um, a little bit of a trivia question for you. Does anybody on here know what kind of rope we use at camp. Um, there's two different kinds of rope we use for climbing. Um, and for almost all of our elements, we use this specific rope. It looks fancy in the color, but the color is not the most important part. It's what kind of rope it is. Okay, so without further ado, I'm gonna show you how to make the figure eight on a bite. I'm gonna grab the other end of this rope. Now, just, just a hint, this is, oh, static rope is close, Cameron. Um, static rope is what we use for rappelling only right now. Um, and we use what we call a static belay on our zip line and on the Burma bridge. So static rope is a little less stretchy than this is. It's kind of, um, you do static stretching and then there's one other kind of stretching you can do when you're exercising. Does anybody know what the other word would be? Um, so what we're gonna do first is you're gonna take what's called your working end and you're going to fold it in half. 
on what we call a bite. So it's not a loop, it's just folded in half here, um, just like a loop, but I'm holding on to one end and it's called a bite. And what I'm gonna do with the bite is I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna go around once and then go around again and pull it through. So I'm making a figure eight. It's kind of hard to see as it's turned one way. I'm gonna show you again. So I'm going, I have my bite. Here's the end of the loop. I'm going around once, around twice, and then I'm gonna pull it through. And then I'm gonna do what's called, you see it right there? I'm gonna do what's called dressing it. So I'm gonna make sure nothing is overlapping. Do you see how these two here, they're overlapping just a little bit? That kind of decreases the strength of the rope. So as long as they're not overlapping, it will increase the strength and it will make it as strong as you need it to be and as safe as you need it to be to climb on, okay? So I'm just gonna play with it a little, little bit, move it around a little bit to make sure it's nice and safe and ready to go. And then I'm gonna pull it tight. When I pull it tight like this and it's not going any further, I know that it's strong and it's as good as it's supposed to be. See how it's tight, it's kind of moving. If you pull yours tight like this and it keeps moving, that means you missed a step and that's okay. We'll go through it one more time here. Okay, so we're gonna pull it all back out. We're gonna go back to the beginning. So I have my working end here and I'm gonna pinch it and make a bite. Kind of how like you bite into some food. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna twist it once and make a loop, twist it again and pull it through. And I'll do it with a shoelace one more time too so it's a little easier to, for you to see the diameter of it. Okay, so let's grab a shoelace. It's a little easier to see the size of it. So I'm making my bite here. I'm just pinching at the bottom. I'm gonna make one loop, then another crossover and through. You see that? And then I'm gonna pull it tight. And it, do you see how it looks like a figure eight on it as it goes around? And this needs to be dressed a little bit because it's a shoelace, so it kind of fits a little funky on the string. Is that easy for everybody to see? Do you see the figure eight in it as you go around? Now this is what would be connected to your chest harness, obviously not this rope, but connected to your chest harness and your seat harness when you go to climb on what is called our dynamic rope. So this right here is our dynamic rope. Um, and that is what our different um, elements are other than the zip line and the Burma bridge, they're all dynamic because you can go up and down and it has a little bit of stretch in it. Yes, Emily, the rope is dynamic. Just kind of like there's static stretching where you're standing still and stretching kind of like this. And then there's dynamic stretching kind of like arm circles where you're really moving those muscles and getting them moving, just like you would um, on a dynamic element like the tree climb or the, uh, the Bermuda Triangle or the jungle gym here at camp. Hi, Susie. Um, thanks for joining us. We are going through different knots that we do at camp. Um, and I'm actually going to go through the figure eight one more time just to make sure you understood how it goes. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> Cameron, that's very funny. Um, so as we continue, um, I want to know what kind of or what not out of the three um, you like the best and if you need to see another one again um, before we end today. So we're gonna go through the figure eight on a bite one more time. So the bite is when we take the rope and we pinch it. We don't do a loop, it's just sitting next to each other and I'm pinching it together. And then we're gonna do the figure eight one more time. So I'm taking the loop, I'm going around once, then I'm twisting around one more time and pulling through and it makes that nice figure eight there that you can almost trace like a figure eight you would draw on a piece of paper. All right. Um, does anyone have any questions as we're going through this and kind of starting to wrap up a little bit? Hi, Angela. Thank you for joining us. Um, so we're going through knot tying a little bit at camp. 
Um, for those of you that are not pretty familiar with camp, um, the adventure program itself is the high and low ropes elements um, that we have throughout camp that um, we use um, throughout the year. So we have two indoor elements and then we have quite a few that are outside that we get to use. Um, and really something that's really important and I think that's important through life um, is what we follow is called challenge by choice. So what that means is that it's your choice to participate, just like in anything else you do. Um, and it's up to you how much you participate, whether it's maybe putting on a harness and a helmet or really climbing all the way up to the top of the tree climb. Does anyone have any questions about knot tying itself? I'm just gonna buzz through here and make sure I didn't miss anybody that popped in. Thank you for all those that are just joining us now. Angela, I'm doing really good. I'm really missing all of our campers, but um, I'm really excited for the day that everybody gets to come back, um, as I'm sure you all are as well. Um, oh, and you can see my friend Harley in the side here, um, kind of joining us <laughs> a little bit too. Um, so I hope you all enjoyed this live stream um, and learning a little bit of knot tying and about the adventure program at camp. Um, and so each week, every Wednesday and every Friday, we are doing live streams. So on Wednesday, it is at 11.45 a.m. Central Standard Time. And that is with Mr. Yu. He does either a song or something about the animals in the nature center. And then on Fridays, um, every Friday at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, um, we are having Courageous or Camp Live, um, where different program specialists and program staff are going through and teaching different skills that they have and different things about camp to everybody on here. Um, so if there's something that you would like to see um, and you haven't seen yet or some kind of skill um, or an activity that maybe you'd be interested in um, having us do live, feel free to comment it below um, and we'll take your suggestions and go from there. Um, thank you for all of those that are joining us now. Hi, Angela. Hi, Amanda. I hope you're all doing really well. Hi, Kristen. Thanks for joining us. Um, so. With all that being said, there is lots going on here. If you're looking for something to do throughout your day, I challenge you to try um, our activity of the day. Um, our great therapeutic recreation interns are still working away. They're working remotely and uh, helping us flatten that curve, but they're working on different interventions or activities that they post daily on our social media. Um, so if you're ever looking for something to do um, to keep you moving or something to keep your brain sharp, um, feel free to check on our social media pages. And if you have any ideas or something you're looking for that maybe we're not showing, um, feel free to comment and we'll give it um, some thought. Okay, and so I just want to thank everybody again for joining us for Facebook Live for Camp Live today. Um, I hope everyone is helping to flatten the curve and staying home. We miss you all more than you know, um, and we really look forward to seeing you all again really soon, hopefully. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this. If you enjoyed our Facebook Live, feel free to share um, this video and like us on Facebook and share it with your friends and family as we continue to do this every week. Um, so thank you again, everyone, for joining us. Um, and we hope to see you soon. If you really like this video or you like what camp's doing, um, feel free to check out camp at www.campcourageous.org. Um, and if you're looking for a way to help out camp, feel free to visit um, our donate section or our needs list um, where you can help us to purchase things like new dynamic rope for the adventure um, program, or even just simple things like paint and paper towels to help um, with different arts and crafts projects. So thank you everyone for joining in with us today and we hope to see you soon. Yeah.